You know, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here again. And I want to speak to the matter that uh, I'm constantly hearing about the antics taken by those who support Donald Trump. I am so taken aback when I'm reminded of the fact that Donald Trump came on the scene advocating superiority, advocating hatred, advocating racism and bigotry, advocating lies and deception. And the people of the United States of America loved it. They couldn't keep the cameras from in front of him. <clears throat> he got more free publicity than one could imagine. And the white fundamentalist evangelicals, they all fell in love with this, what had been held before the American people as a demonic structure. This is what we were taught in the black community, churches. This is what we saw white people being instructed on, on television and radio. So basically, everything that he came on the scene representing is what America had been taught was evil. And the nation went wild. They made him president. And when he lost the second time in his efforts, those who fell in love with him were willing to overthrow the government. And even though they were unsuccessful, they have been lining themselves up, or should I say aligning themselves up, so that the next election, if they don't win it outright, they have the authority and the ability to legally take it. All the fruit of a lie. Now, the thing that really blows my mind is that I think about this as the expression of the American people. What really makes it blow my mind is the fact that since 1988, I believe, and for several presidential elections since that time, I ran as a candidate <clears throat> to be president of the United States. And each time I had to run as a write-in candidate because the things that I advocated to the American public was the same kind of things that the American people had been taught were legitimate, godly things. It represented what Christianity represented. It represented love and compassion for one another. It represents the authority of an invisible power called God over the carnality of men's perspective. I ran on that. And it was so uninteresting to the American public until it was not reported by anyone except a few newspapers across the country who received a notice about write-in candidates. It was only temporarily put out there and no one picked up on it. One news uh, reporter somewhere in Nebraska, I believe, wrote a statement about the reason that uh, people weren't getting interested in my campaign is because it cared more for them than they cared for themselves. And when you think about 
we're talking about over, what, 20, 30 years or so, when the same effort has been made over and over again through the potential of becoming governor of the state of Minnesota or United States Senator from the state of Minnesota champion one concern and that is what we have held before the American public as being godly, as being divine, as being Christian, as being loving and truthful that same conversation that you go to church for still where you have mega churches talking about these kinds of things and yet it's been put before them to jump where the cameras the cameras were all over the jive where are the people that's interested in peace and prosperity for every citizen where are the people that's interested in freedom and joy and dreams coming true for people? Where are the people who are concerned that every citizen have an, an opportunity to participate in the creative process of causing a manifestation of the goods and services that we the people have determined are so important to our lives? Where are the people that support that? Where are those voices? And I'm not talking about just talking. I'm talking about standing up for it. I'm not talking about overthrowing the government with violence, but I'm talking about changing the government with being sensible and loving and wonderful and caring and being filled with compassion and smart. That's what I'm talking about. Where are those voices? I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I've been doing this for 40 years. And I see Donald Trump, he's been doing it for about 40 years as well. The difference between he and I, he's white, I'm black. He got blue eyes, I got brown eyes. He had blonde hair, I got white hair. He says he's rich, I'm broke. But he says that some are special. I say we are all special or none are special. He gets the votes I get and you get on behalf of love left out. Well, I think I just leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. You know where I'm coming from. Until next time, Eddie Marcus say goodbye.